So here comes our keynote speakers, Mark and Manuel. Props. Our brilliant first speakers will give us the answer in their comprehensive presentation on the subject. As our key, uh, ask our, uh, our key speakers will ask uh, in the exploration, uh, what is the, the exploration of artificial intelligence and technological breakthroughs, and uh, what do they deliver? Do they deliver and control the project tasks? Both of them work for PwC Switzerland. One is the director of the Transformation Assurance Division of the company, and the other as a senior project manager. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming on the stage with a big round of applause, the project manager with Black Belt in Financial Service, Services, Mr. Mark Lachman, and his fellow worker, the professional Scrum Master and PMP Certified Project Manager, Mr. Manuel Probst. Welcome them as the rock stars. Good morning to everyone. Before we start, uh, as well, we'll give you a short insight of the key tasks and uh, key topics which we will cover today on a short video. I guess we have a technical issue. Can you maybe click on the play? <laughs> <laughs> we still need some human intervention. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we'll cover that afterwards. But I guess the whole presentation disappeared now. <laughs> so, and that's in the time of digitalization and uh, artificial intelligence. So that's, that's really a challenge now for me. That was not expected. So I will start uh, anyhow. So today, it's really a particular honor for us uh, to be here in Sofia to speak uh, at this conference. And uh, because Sofia is one of the oldest capitals uh, in Europe, and talking about the future of project management and artificial intelligence, knowing uh, that this city has a history of 7,000 years and an experience as well of 7,000 years, that's really amazing. So therefore, a big thank you to the PMI Bulgaria chapter to bring us here today. So let's focus uh, on the future, on your future. So seeing so many experienced project managers in one room, that's amazing. And as well, seeing that the digital revolution has not yet brought any project management robot to this conference. Or did I miss one? Is a robot here in this room? I couldn't hear. So if you believe a robot is sitting next to you, raise your hand, but be careful if you are wrong. That can be very stressful for you the whole day. So I can see, there's one robot. Oh. It's coming.
So, are you ready for revolution? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. So, that was the interactive part of the session. <laughs> so, coming back to, to the robots, and you have seen a lot of those parts that automation is coming in, and uh, maybe uh, the classic project manager will be terminated in the future. But it's good to see you here all in that room, and that means you must be still relevant. Hang on. Have I said still relevant? So, for sure, there's a difference. So, if we are going into project organization and ask to talk about artificial intelligence uh, in project management and organizations, what we are seeing is this. That are the real concerns and fears of project manager and project management staff when it comes to artificial intelligence. So that's called the Terminator myth. And we will explain why it's a myth. But there are fears and concerns, because people have fear to lose their jobs, or maybe that the change is coming into the job environment. And yes, for sure, technological breakthroughs like big data, machine learning, natural language processing, they will change the future of project manager and management. And yes, artificial intelligence will change the course of our project management task, will be controlled and delivered in the future. However, and that's really important, there's one part which artific artificial intelligence cannot do, to be human. So, today, we will show you why we believe that artificial intelligence, in, uh, intelligence is set to change the future of project management, what AI is in the context of project management, as well to show you, show you the obstacles and challenges, how to implement artificial intelligence in project management on a real-life example, or my biggest pain as a project manager, I can tell you, and as well the lessons learned out of it. And we will explain to you afterwards how you can stay relevant in a fully automated project management world. So I'm going to start with a brief introduction into the topic of artificial intelligence. And the goal is to get a common understanding and to define some basic terminology which we'll be using throughout the presentation. So just to manage your expectation, this is not going to be an artificial intelligence masterclass, because I think that would uh, span a whole day. So if you ask people what they imagine when they think of artificial intelligence, a lot of them connect it with movie science fiction. For instance, here is a picture of uh, the Hollywood movie Iron Man. I think most of you know, know this movie, uh, with Robert Downey Jr. Uh, acting as Tony Stark, who is a very, very successful entrepreneur. But not only a successful entrepreneur, he's also saving the world, right? But he's not doing this with an army of thousands of soldiers. He's not doing this with a large workforce in his company. He's doing this by using intelligent systems and automation. So in the picture here, you see uh, his system called Jarvis, which is his personal assistant. Uh, in, in, in the movie, it's the, the female voice who's basically taking care of everything. She's taking care of Tony Stark's company, making sure that the budgets are correct. She's taking uh, care of product development, but she's also taking care of Tony Stark's mansion and house. She's taking care of his security. She's arranging meetings and dates for him. And whenever Tony is somewhere in trouble in a desert, fighting against some others, she makes sure that his combat gear is flying to him and helping him out. Others connect artificial intelligence with military weapons, intelligent robots, or self-flying drones. Others connect artificial intelligence with future healthcare, where probably nurses and doctors are no longer needed. But if this sounds future to you, actually, all of us, we're using artificial intelligence each and every day. For instance, if you write a text message. We have series on our iPhones or Amazon Alexa, if some of you have this back home. And there are many, many other uh, examples of artificial intelligence and how it's actually uh, being implemented already. However, what is important is that we're still at the very beginning of a large development. 
So no one knows actually what the future will bring. But what is for sure, that a lot of money, a lot of energy, and a lot of brain power is being invested into further developing this technology. Um, if you, for instance, take the, 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 the automobile industry, it's not primarily the big car industries that focus on or that invest in self-driving cars. It's also technology companies like Google. It's startups like uh, Tesla. And if all these smart people who have a lot of funding as well uh, play together, I'm pretty confident that there will be a game changer in the near future. So back to some theory, what artificial intelligence actually is. And uh, in, in, uh, in science, you will find uh, a lot of definitions, but more or less, all of them tell you the same. One of my favorite is from Peter Norvig and Stuart Russell, who uh, wrote a very famous book on artificial intelligence. They define it as um, the designing and building of intelligent agents that receive percepts from an environment um, and take action based on these percepts that affect the environment. Sounds relatively easy. But the big difference here compared to general purpose software is that machines are able to take action on their own. And for the purpose of our uh, presentations, because there are so many different artificial intelligence applications out in the world, we try to cluster them into four buckets to make it a bit more feasible and tangible for, 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 for the purpose of the presentation. So the first one, which uh, is also the, the most simple one, uh, we call uh, automatization. And the goal here is that a machine takes over a repetitive, usually monotonous task. In its simplest form, this task is being performed based on a predefined logic. So for instance, if an event happens, do this. In a project management context, you can imagine that uh, there is a system uh, that it's been programmed that every Tuesday evening, he sends out a reminder to the project stream leads that they submit their project status report if not already done. That's a very easy use case. Um, the second bucket, involves human-computer interaction. Um, we call this natural language processing. This is uh, the phase where series and Alexas come into place. But not, but not only these guys, um, there is also uh, something called the chatbot. Um, a chatbot is, uh, is comparable. If you, if, you, if you chat, probably on Microsoft, same time with a colleague, chatbot is the same, with the only difference that you don't chat with a colleague, but with a, with a computer system. And uh, especially, especially um, uh, service hotlines are being heavily replaced by, by chatbots. Not sure whether you have made some experience in that. I made the experience um, during summer my iPhone was stolen uh, when I was on vacation and I tried to call my, my phone carrier to block the SIM card. And you know what happens when, you're in a, when you call a hotline? You wait. <laughs> And after like 20 minutes, because I was abroad, it got a bit expensive, and I was like, nah, no, probably I hang up. I went onto the internet, trying to search on their webpage, and did, did not find either what I was searching. But then, a chatbot popped up. He asked me, hey, how can I help you with? And I tried it, and actually, after two minutes, I had the link where to click, and my SIM card was, was, uh, was blocked. So that's great, is it? The third bucket um, is probably what's currently most popular and most famous. It's everything that relates to machine learning. Machine learning, as the, as the name says, uh, enables a machine to solve a problem and learn this problem, how to solve it. What the machine needs is data. And the more and better the data is, the better is the learning. Makes sense. Huh? Um, in, it, in its traditional way, machine learning algorithms, they are based on mathematical and statistical uh, techniques. So there are, there's actually not one machine learning algorithm out, there is many. So for instance, there are a lot of classifier uh, algorithms, a lot of uh, logistic regression uh, logarithm, algorithms, and uh, decision trees, etc., etc. So there's not the one solution. There's many algorithms. Some of them are suited better to solve a specific problems, others not. And the third bucket, uh, the last bucket which we have, is a special form of machine learning, which is called deep learning. 
different to traditional machine learning algorithms, deep learning is based on neural network theory. And the goal of deep learning is to enable a better, deeper learning compared to traditional learning algorithms. And the systems do this in further developing these neural networks and bring in some, some sort of thought to have a better solution. So that's it for the theory. Um, if we now go back to project management, uh, before we, we jump into the, the future of project management, uh, we just want to quickly highlight some key milestones that have happened in project management and how they affect uh, the future. So as we already learned um, in the morning, that projects are old. Mikael showed an, a much nicer picture of the pyramids than, than we do, but still, projects are old. Uh, but however, it was not until the, 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 the 20th century when there was actually something called the birth of project management and when it became more formal. And uh, the construction of the first nuclear weapon during World War II was actually considered as a first project. And after this period, um, a lot happened in the project management uh, practice and community. Communities evolved, like PMI in 1969, next year is the 50th anniversary, um, IPMA and some other communities. And uh, this phase can be seen as the uh, institutionalization of project management. And as so many smart people come together, they actually further develop the practice. So in the, after, in the 80s and 90s, a lot of basic work has been done in project management, like defining the PIM book, uh, PRINCE2 as a standard, or also Agile standards as Scrum came out. And these, these methodologies and framework, these still build the basis for modern project management. I'm sure most, probably all of you are still using these, these methodologies in your projects. And uh, hand in hand with technological uh, developments, also project management became more digital. I mean, in recent years, a lot of mobile applications that support project managers came, came to the market. Uh, we've seen a, a, a large shift in the market coming from uh, general license-based project management tools like Microsoft uh, Project to more software-as-a-service-based project tools where you only purchase when you, use, uh, when you only pay when you use them. This is a trend in the whole industry, but also affects project management. And uh, nowadays, another disruption is underway. And this is mainly related to all the emerging technologies. We will focus on artificial intelligence in our presentation, but there is not, there's other things that will have an, a huge impact on projects as well. But my question is now, why do we actually need another evolution or even revolution in project management? I mean, speaking as a project manager, sorry to say that, we can do better. And we need to be better, because there is a lot of studies that show that projects still do not deliver what they should deliver, that there is a lot of projects that struggle. That's a fact. So for instance, uh, uh, our company did one, uh, one study, a global study, where we interviewed uh, 2,500 project managers and sponsors, asking them, what were the key issues why your projects failed? And in conclusion, um, the answer was the top three uh, responses were all related to project internal factors. So it's not that, the stake, that it's the stakeholder's fault, it not, it's not that company changed the strategy, it's all related to project internal factors. Like underestimated complexity, which led to poor estimation and planning, resulting in missed deadlines, the classical uh, 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 schedule issue, or um, that changes in scope were not managed properly, which resulted in unrealistic targets. And also, that there were insufficient resources. Another study from Nelson, who's a professor uh, doing research on project management since, since a lot of years, um, he, he did an in-depth analysis of IT projects to verify what the, what the key issues were in there. And what he found out was that 90% uh, so that's a nine with a zero. Or in other words, that nine out of 10 issues in IT projects were related either to processes or to people. So when, when I talk to an IT project manager and the project is in trouble, he usually blames 
the software vendor saying, yeah, you know, their product does not deliver what was expected, or they're using some outdated or complex technology. No, that's not the key root cause why IT projects struggle, according to Nelson. It's either because you don't have appropriate resources, you don't have resources at all, or these resources are not managed properly in order to, to, to deliver high-performing results. What always shocks me a bit is the 45% the related to, uh, to processes. So this means that uh, project management processes and procedures are either not defined, not implemented, or not properly followed. Usually a project manager knows what PMI or PRINCE2 tells them. And I'm not saying that they, they, that they don't have a clue, but when we speak with clients, we quite often see that it's actually the case that these processes and procedures are not really properly implemented. Quite often the excuse is, yeah, you know, we're doing it sort of in an agile way. <laughs> so now again, how, how, how does now artificial intelligence fit into that? If we, for instance, take this one, that's the PIM book. The cookbook of project management. That's uh, not the latest edition, it's the fifth edition, but still it's, uh, it's a big one. Um, the PIM book defines uh, 42 processes along the five process groups and the uh, 10 uh, core project management uh, knowledge areas. And for each uh, process, it defines which input this process needs, which activities are being performed within this process, and what the output is that this process generates, which have an impact on other processes. So now, what is Nelson and uh, 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 what is uh, Russell and Stewart uh, saying about artificial intelligence? It says, it takes an input from the outside world, processes it based on intelligent actions, and produces an output. I think there is quite some opportunities, isn't it? And Mark is now going to tell you some, uh, how, pro how AI will evolve in project management and also show you some use cases which we've seen and which we have developed. So thank you, Manuel, for setting the scene on artificial intelligence. And I guess you all will now be able to explain artificial intelligence to, to your followers. So AI and project management, if we... Um, hook on the evolution of project management as well on the four steps uh, of artificial intelligence. We are seeing the same um, evolution as well on implementation of artificial intelligence uh, in project management. So first of all, I guess everyone knows that, that's the integration automation of specific standard project management tasks. And I guess you all in your organization, you have that already seen, that specific task um, has been put into workflow integration or into process automation. So it's like uh, populating specific templates uh, with information like project uh, forecast on budget, timing, schedules. That's, that's reality. That's already in, in, our, in our organizations. The second phase. That's a phase where AI, the first time, comes really in in a like uh, human-computer interaction. That's the so-called chatbots. And Manuel told a very positive story about using chatbots, helping you. So for sure, on projects, you can use them if you have a specific uh, question uh, on your project, like uh, who's working on my project or who's not working on my project, and uh, where I'm staying uh, from a budget forecast, so those chatbots are easy to scroll to do to, to the data and give you an answer on that. But as well, I tell you, those chatbots, they will make you crazy in the future. Because what they will do as well, they will ask you all the time for a status. So where we are with the milestone X, Y, Z, why you have not uh, brought in that milestone in time and in budget. And the issue or the challenge is, those chatbots, it's not, not, not like your PMO. They are machines. They are digital. They have no feelings, no emotions. They will ask you again and again as long as you have answered. And personal, I don't like that. But that will come for sure. But now, the third phase. 
And that's where really artificial intelligence is kicking in. That's when machine learning is coming in. Because it's the first time that you get a predictive analytics uh, in your information. So like using a chatbot with machine learning that can give you advice on specific areas, like how to steer a project or how to plan a project on specific cir circumstances and parameters. And as well, giving you some advice on specific challenges, risk in your project, how you have to adapt with the best possible solution. The so fourth step, I guess that will be the very disruptive step. That will be the autonomous project management. Like self-driving cars, this means you need very limited uh, intervention by a human to run a project. Keep that in mind. Do we really need project managers as a human in the future? That will be one of the key questions, which we will answer as well. So, looking to real examples on those four steps. So, I guess for the integration automation, you all have seen that. There are some um, good examples are like, who of you knows Wunderlist? Some. So Wunderlist is like a to-do task, uh, which you can put on an iPhone or on a PC, which is uh, managing your to-dos. So that has been bought by Microsoft and is integrated into MS Project Online. So you can now create a schedule and create a to-do list automatically out of uh, your MS Project plan by uh, Wunderlist. So Wunderlist is tracking all the to-dos for you as well, and is highlighting if you have to deliver or to answer on specific areas. And then for sure, you can use that with Slack. Who knows Slack? Ah, perfect. Now we're coming closer. So you can use Slack templates or MS SharePoint templates, which can be populated automatically with information coming out of MS Project and uh, Wunderlist. So I guess that's standard. The second part with the chatbot assistance. So maybe to ask, who of you are using chatbots in the project uh, environment? No one. <laughs> wow. I, I asked the same question uh, four weeks ago uh, in Los Angeles uh, on the global conference, and I really uh, received uh, some arms uh, showing that they're using chatbots. But that's all on the Googles, on the Apples for sure, because they, uh, they're doing nothing else. They actually really digitalize the world. So it will come, and uh, we have Slackbot um, chatbots, uh, we have uh, Fireflies, so they're really using uh, information, crawling through the data, which are on your project environment, and as well answer on the data, and giving you advice uh, and uh, support. So if we come to the machine learning, who's using machine learning on, uh, on your project management? So if, if I guess if you're not using chatbots, you will not using machine learning as well. Or is someone using? No one. That's great. A lot of potential here. So we have different tools using machine learning, really giving a prediction on the past data of your projects into the future. So like um, Polydome. Polydome is a tool which is crawling through all the data, through all your resources, through all the tasks, and giving you like a dashboard with the key most important task that's always changing uh, on a real-time basis. So if you're a project manager, you always get the most important task on your dashboard to answer, or <coughs> as well to, to um, um, sorry, my voice is going, so I'm, I'm still a human. <laughs> Just I need a sip of water, oh, perfect. Thank you, Michael. So I'm back. Perfect. So that's where you really get um, advice to support you as a project manager. But there are other tools like Rescoper and ClickUp, which is uh, using the same. So if we're coming to the autonomous project manager, which is a little bit uh, concerning us, do you think there's a real-life example? No. At the moment, there's no real-life example. So, for sure, a lot of scientists working on that. But it is not easy to really bring that, because why? Keep in mind, if you have an autonomous project management, that would mean 
that this machine has to crawl all the time through the data of your project environment. It has to crawl all the time to internal and external stakeholder communications to get an understanding about perceptions and commitment levels of each stakeholders. Because without that, you're not able to steer and, and control your project. Because if you are not uh, fulfilling uh, the perception or commitment of your stakeholders, you will not be able to really um, get your project done. So the question is, how far can, can artificial intelligence go? And uh, therefore, we have to ask this person. Who knows that person? There's one person in the back knowing it. So that's not me in 20 years. That's uh, Stephen Wolfram, uh, English uh, physicist uh, and also best known for his uh, research on cellular automa, automata <coughs> as well. Oh God, oh God. As well on his um, uh, Mathematica um, algebraic software. Maybe you know Mathematica if you're working on statistics, and as well for his search engine Wolfram Alpha. Who of you knows uh, Wolfram Alpha? Yeah. So what's the difference of Wolfram Alpha as a search engine com <coughs> compared, to, compared to Google? So Google is listing only web pages, documents, uh, if you would take a search. Wolfram Alpha is giving you a clear answer on your question, like why, how, and what. And Stephen, he was asked about how far can we go with automation. And it was, what will AI allow us uh, to automate? And he answered, we will be able to automate everything that we can describe. The problem is it is not clear <coughs> what we can describe in the future. I'm sorry for that. So. Manuel has shown you this book. Do you, do you know that can be automated? Yes, for sure. Everything. Because it is described. That means all the technical parts will be automated and as well will be covered by artificial intelligence. So, coming to a uh, real-life experience, amazing. I guess, I guess, I guess that's, that's the reason why we need machines, because they do not have those issues. I'm okay here. I, I will manage it, as there's always. <laughs> so, what are the key challenges and prerequisites to implement? First, first of all, we have to understand what is a project. So, by definition, a project is unique. So, can we predict a unique project to another project? Is every project similar from a population to get a prediction on it? And no, there are differences of uh, projects, so we have to segment projects. And we have to cover social dynamics in projects, like different cultures, different languages, different perceptions. And as well, you, you, you know it, people have hidden agendas as well. They're not telling you all the time the truth. And we have to keep record. That, that means we need data which we can analyze and use to predict. So that's a, the key challenges. To understand a project is unique, it has a, a specific setup, you have a social dynamic environment, and as well, you need data. And as well, if you want to implement AI, do not expect that AI, AI has creativity. It can only use what happened in the past and can then predict into the future. And it, and it will not come without cost, so you need 
investments upfront to implement artificial intelligence in your organizations. So having that in mind, there are specific prerequisites you have to implement. So first of oh, sorry, it's too fast. So first of all, you need time and financial resources to implement. So it's not, you are not able to plug it in. It's not possible. <clears throat> you need the right skills and um, capability. And as well, yeah, perfect, I will do it, yeah. Thank you, so that's, that's human. <laughs> so you need as well some uh, computer uh, processing power to um, compute all the data. And for sure you need to have a clear data structure. And you need a high maturity of your project management processes. So we, as PwC, have that all. We have all those prerequisites. We have some money to invest into it. And we started, for sure, a pilot four years ago. Because, as you may be know, we have 220,000 uh, employees working for PwC globally. And all of them are project managers. So we had to go to predict expected client satisfactions. So they're called net promoter score. That's when, when a client is really uh, giving us uh, positive feedback on our engagements. So what, what we're doing, we're using our project analytics engine, which is based uh, on our data science machine, which is built uh, in Switzerland by scientists. So it's not like having consultants that's really scientists, physicists, who have the brain power to really make it happen. So, <clears throat> what did we? Um, we selected 110,000 projects, with 70,000 which had write-offs. That doesn't mean they were failing, but we have not achieved our expected uh, margin. We um, selected 3,400 net promoter scores <coughs> and um, 3.5 billion euros invoiced on our projects. We put that into our machine and we get a prediction on expected net promoter score, expected write-offs and as well client satisfaction. And we did that with our, with our data science machine so we're using specific statistical software like uh, Python, um, Azure Ma uh, Machine Learning by Microsoft, R is a program language, and any other specific language is using by our scientists. So we had a team with a timeline. Everything went uh, really well. We had all the prerequisites. What do you think? Do you think it was a success? Yes and no. Yes, it was a success because we were able to predict, but we underestimated one point. That's emotions. Here's the humankind behind. So, if we are telling a project manager or a sponsor that a specific project in the future will not be delivered in time and budget. What do you think? What was the reaction? First of all, shock. And the second one, that cannot be true. Your data must be wrong. So no, our data is, uh, is true. That's a prediction statistically proven. <coughs> so, the commitment level of the organization, that's most important. If you have no support from your, from your top management, you will not be able to really implement it. The second part on the net promoter scores, as I said, we, had, we selected 3,400. And um, we looked into that, and then we saw, wow, that's good. They all were very positive on an 8 or 9 from 10. 10 is the best. And then we looked into that, where are all those uh, scores uh, below? 
And then we realized, OK, our project managers and uh, sponsors only ask for feedback when they know that they have a positive uh, project. So all the data of those failed and uh, not ma could manage the project, we do not have received feedback because they have not asked. So therefore, we change as well the KPI to get information of all our client feedbacks to really put into the KPI of each of our project managers. So that we get as well the failed and the bad news to further improve. So Manuel is now telling you the future of project management and how you can overcome those challenges and prerequisites. And afterwards, I guess we have a Q&A session where you can ask specific questions. And I take 10 minutes to get my voice back. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, just quickly want to recap uh, what Mark was now telling you beforehand about the evolution of AI and project management and then tell you what this will mean for you as a project manager. So as we have seen in these four phases, uh, the goal of the first one is to streamline and automate, reduce costs and increase quality and efficiency of simple tasks that is currently being done within a project. Um, the second one on top of this is also being able, by bringing in interaction, human-computer interaction, be able to take over even more tasks. And what does, it, what, does, what does this mean for a project manager? On the one hand, he's been relieved from nasty, boring activities, but also probably his team is being released from these activities. So on the one hand, he doesn't need to have such a big team. On the other hand, he will have more time to focus on more complex activities that probably create more value. I always ask myself the question, do you need to have a master's degree or a PhD working in a PMO to arrange meetings and write protocols? Probably you want to do something more exciting, right? And you can do more exciting. But nowadays, someone has to do the meeting notes. Someone has to arrange the meetings. If we bring in the machine learning based project management, this will enable predictive advice, analysis and actions. So using machine learning on top of the first two phases, this will even further accelerate the automation uh, and interaction part with even better results. And in addition, project managers and sponsors will be able to take better decisions because the system provides them a view into the future. And last but not least, uh, as we heard, autonomous project management, this will involve uh, little to none human computer interaction. So uh, as of today, we think um, autonomous project management is quite unlikely in the next couple of years. However, we see uh, some use cases in a couple of times, uh, in a couple of years, especially for more standardized, simpler projects. If you now map these, uh, three areas to, the, to, the, to our three, uh, four phases. We are of the opinion that uh, the technical part will be fully substituted by, project, uh, by, by machines. The strategic and business management part will not be fully substituted or taken over by machines, but it will enable much better results for project managers and make their work much more efficient and value creating. The leadership part uh, at least as of today, uh, we don't think that this is going to be taken over by machines. So as a takeaway, as a project manager, I would think of in which role I'm currently strong and most, uh, spending most of my time and try to make a plan how I can shift to probably a role uh, that is needed in five, ten years' time. And this is obviously uh, that you focus on work that emphasizes uh, human skills like team leadership, motivation, communication, negotiation, but also creativity. So the future of project management, yes, is going to be artificial intelligence. But do you still believe in the Terminator myth? Maybe not, because 
artificial intelligence will be supporting project managers in the future, not fully replacing them. And if it's uh, developed purposefully, it can be a huge accelerator and game changer for you as a project manager, helping you to deliver your projects even more successful. And if, uh, if I go back to, to Iron Man, Tony Stark, I mean, in a traditional way, he would have had no chance to save the world. But he was a smart guy and developed uh, systems and relied on technology that enabled him to make a difference. But in the end, he was the one who took the important decisions. He was the one who brought in creativity in difficult situations. He was the one who was standing in front of the stakeholders, like when he was giving these this crazy uh, interviews with, with the news. And he was also the one who was managing the stakeholders, like the President of the United States. And all in all, in the end, Tony was the star anyway. And I think uh, I, I like this as an analogy, as, uh, as, a, as being a project manager. Just make the most use of whatever you can in order to be successful. And with that being said, uh, thank you for listening to us. Uh, we're uh, a bit over time, but still we, we are happy to, to receive some questions uh, and try to answer them as good as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Manuel. So, let us open the question and answer session now. But before we do so, let me define question. Question is a single and short statement with question mark at the end of it. <laughs> so, are any questions from the audience? Any questions? Of course, you can uh, speak with, uh, with our speakers off. during the... Yep. Yes, so, yes, Bob. Am I artificial intelligence? Or yes. am I something else? Yes, you are artificial intelligence, and you are doing hell of a good job helping me here with this event. I hope you are not scared from me, Dr. Todorov, and you are not afraid that I might take your place. No, I'm not scared, <laughs> Bob. I'm not scared at all. Uh, on the contrary, I'm, I'm very pleased to have, to have you here as my helper you know, with this event.